going to be a abbreviated version of Yankees game day, but I wanted to talk about Luis, the real deal heel, because he is just pitching lights out. Who would have thought this guy would step in and do as well as he's done? Where the heel has this guy been? Okay, that was, that was corny. That was terrible. We talk a lot about poise and how important it is for a pitcher. The game can really accelerate on you when you're nervous or when you're a little bit ruffled by things going on, teams putting pressure on you. But Luis Heal seems to have a very slow pulse. And what do I mean by that? He doesn't get out of sorts when he gets into a jam. He focuses. In tough situations, some people focus and some people fold. And Luis Heal feels like the type of pitcher who's going to focus. And not only do I get the feeling that he's going to be a legitimate big league starter and a really good one, but I feel like he could be a big game pitcher. He's showing a lot of the signs of somebody who just adapts well to high pressure situations. All of the traditional stats are excellent. He's pitched three games. He's got 15 and two thirds innings pitched, 18 strikeouts, a minuscule 1.02 whip or walks and hits per innings pitched. He's allowed seven walks and he has yet to allow a run. He's got a 0.00 ERA. First Yankees pitcher in modern history to allow zero runs in at least four and two thirds innings in each of his first three starts. He's been fantastic. He's been phenomenal. He's been way better than we could have anticipated. There's not a ton of data stat cast wise to look at with Luis Heal because he hasn't pitched a ton of innings, but the numbers that we do have are pretty good. He's in the 84th percentile of max exit velocity. He's in the 87th percentile of fastball velocity, and he's in the 89th percentile of fastball spin. He's basically Chad Green, except he pitches as a starting pitcher. Hitters are barreling the ball off of him 2.6% of the time, which is less than the league average of 6.6%. His average exit velocity against is 87.9 miles per hour, which is less than the league average of 88.3 miles per hour. His expected batting average is 167, which is much lower than the league average of 243. His sweet spot percentage, the amount of balls that they hit that are off of the barrel of the bat, are 28.2%, which is less than the league average of 32.9%. The hard hit percentage, balls off of him that are hit 95 miles an hour or harder, are 30.8%, which is less than the league average of 35.5%. Hitters are striking out 28.1% of the time, which is much higher than the league average of 22%. They are walking more, so his control has not been as good as the standard major league pitcher. 10.9% of his batters faced are walks as opposed to 8.4% of the league average. So his numbers back up the fact that he's pitching very well. That's no surprise. I don't know if he's going to be able to keep it up, but I think he will be because he's got really clean mechanics. He doesn't fall off towards first base when he throws, which means he's not opening up his front side. He sometimes doesn't follow through on his pitches as much as maybe he could but he's still throwing 97, 98 miles an hour. We've seen 99 a few times. He reportedly threw 100 miles an hour in the minor leagues. We've seen a slider that at times has a lot of depth. Sometimes it's more flat. He's also pitched up in the zone with it a little bit. We don't know if that's on purpose or by accident. I suspect it's by accident. He's gotten a couple of called strikes on that pitch. He needs to get more consistent with the slider for sure. His changeup is 93 miles an hour. We saw one at 94 miles an hour, and it's got a lot of sink. So the fact that this guy can kind of throw a bunch of different pitches and seems to be around the strike zone, he's not walking a ton of guys, he's not missing by a ton most of the time, and he seems to have that, like we said, a slow pulse. When he gets into trouble, he seems to focus, and he seems to find the zone with good quality pitches. Luis Heal is definitely the real deal. All right, so in case you're checking the standings, the Yankees are now in the lead for the wild card spot, which is good. That means that you would play a potential wild card game at home. But the division is not out of reach at this point. 
It's so crazy. A month and a half ago, we were looking at blowing this team up, saying rebuild, fire everybody. They look dead in the water, and now they are surging. And they're surging with a lot of their key guys missing from the lineup still. Anthony Rizzo's out. You got Gio Urshela out. Labor Torres is out. A lot of these young guys have stepped up, so that's a credit to these young men who have really stepped up and propelled this team into a better position. Now, you did gain nine games on the Red Sox in 22 days. Can you gain five games on the Rays over the final six weeks? I guess we're about to find out. It's going to be tough. The Rays are a better team than the Red Sox, for sure. But the Yankees are rolling, and their schedule isn't too tough the rest of the way. The Blue Jays seem to have fallen off a little bit. I don't think they are going to be a serious problem down the stretch. It's really going to come down to how well the Yankees can play and how well the Rays can play. But the Yankees do have an outside shot at winning this division. And if you come back and win this division after the start that you got off to, that's really going to provide this team with a big boost of energy and confidence going into the playoffs. I mean, maybe I'm just the Yankee fan with the rose-colored glasses and I'm eternally optimistic, but I'm feeling pretty good right now. I'm feeling like this team has really flipped the script on this lifeless group that we saw earlier in the year. And credit to Brian Cashman because he did go out and get Joey Gallo. He did go out and get Anthony Rizzo. Joey Gallo has been unbelievable for this team. He struck out a lot, but he's walking, he's hitting home runs, and he's playing defense, which is exactly what we expected of him. And he seems like he's got a great arm. I mean, he made a great throw last night. As for Anthony Rizzo, I mean, we all saw how good he was. He is the perfect Yankee Stadium first baseman. He can really pick it over there. He's got a short stroke. He can pull the ball in the air, and he can shoot the ball the opposite field so you can't put the shift on him. And now that Luke Voigt is hitting, you can move him into the DH spot. John Carlo has been playing the outfield more. He played right field last night. Aaron Judge got a half a night off. I think Aaron Judge is going to be in center field a little bit more. Joey Gallo is doing a nice job in left field. I'm liking the way this team is shaping up. Special shout out to the Patreon supporters and anyone else who has supported this channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it the old thumbs up and subscribe for more Yankees content year round. If you really enjoyed it, check out The Freeze. It's the official podcast of this channel. Or pick up some swag from the Teespring store. Link in the description. Thanks for watching.